Over the last 100 days, I've seen a 46% uptick across the board for my eBay reselling business. There's the big question of how, why, what did I do, what's changed? Well, in this video, that's what I wanna take you through. I wanna take you through five things that has changed and what I've been doing in order to see the growth that I've been wanting for a very long time. Hey, what's going on? If you are new here, my name's Chris. Welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. And I'm building a business that suits my lifestyle. Now, I've been doing this reselling business for 118 weeks. And this week has been my best week yet again. But also, I've done a quick reflection over the last 100 days as I've been growing and as I've been changing some of the operations and the way I've been doing business. And it's paid off. It has really, really paid off. And that's why I want to break down five areas that I believe if you can understand, if you can take some action in these areas, you too can see the growth. Now, if you do stick around to the end, I do have some show and tell and I do have the business update on my best week yet. Now, just to be very frank and to be open and upfront, this does not mean I've got it all figured out. That's for sure. But what I can say is over the last 100 days, I have changed the way I've operated and I'm seeing some really, really good results. And what will be interesting is to see how can I go for the next 100 days? How can I go for the remainder of the year? And that all comes back on me, but it also comes back on the way we do business. And that's why I'm going to take you through these five ways that I believe we can continue to grow our business. Now, these five areas are simple on paper, like anything, but of course, there's a lot of detail behind it. So the five items are source better, list better to sell better, focus on selling to make money, leverage systems that make work easier and network. So number one, source better. Now, when we source better items, it gives us a chance to make more money. But what does that actually mean? What does source better actually, actually mean? Well, the way that I've broken this down is you want to be selling items that are either in demand due to someone wants them or someone needs them. Now, we can actually jump onto eBay and have a look at the item sold, you know, what's been selling, how many are for sale, how many are listed, and also how many are selling, right? And that can start to tell us is like, is there a demand for this? If you are a store member, if like if you do have a store, you can also go into some of the research options that we have having a store. And you can see how much has been selling in the last 100 days, 90 days, 60 days, 30 days, even longer periods. And you can start to do that research. Now, the other point for this is, is the item cost efficient? Can this item be purchased at a price and still enable you to make a profit, but also have some wiggle room? You wanna have options. You wanna be able to have the power. You don't wanna be trying to just sell to, to be able to make you know, ends meet. You wanna be able to sell and be able to dominate that area. And when I say dominate, meaning like you're comfortable to be able to sell something and make a nice little profit too. So for me, what I've actually been doing is I've introduced two new categories into my business. I've dabbled in these over a few, over the last few years, not many, but I've literally turned my business around going from what primarily was books to now doing a lot more clothing tops and a lot more clothing bottoms. And as you can see here from my eBay performance, over the last 100 days, I have seen a thousand percent uplift or uptick in selling clothing tops and also a 475% increase uptick of clothing bottoms. Now that's essentially because I changed the way I was looking at what I needed to sell. Obviously we had a big change in the external market as well with economic factors of interest rates and people struggling to pay rent and things like that. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't just selling items people wanted, but selling items that people need as well. Everyone needs clothes, right? Now there's hundreds and thousands of different items and areas that we can do this analysis and understand what makes sense. You can niche down into certain brands. You can niche down into types of clothing. You can niche down into types of items. I'm not here to say, if you do clothing, you too are gonna make lots of money. It doesn't work like that, right? You need to understand what it is you're selling and we'll get to that shortly. Actually, it's a really good segue to point number two, which is list better, sell better. So what I mean by this is a couple of different things. We need to understand and research the items that we are selling and the niche that it is in. We want to make it easy to sell, right? We don't want to have to be trying to figure out, you know, every single time we're listing an items, what is this item? Where does it come from? What's the history? Who am I selling it to? What do I need to know about it? You need to do that for the first time, right? But you need to then also be able to take that and be able to put it to memory and to be able to take action with it quickly because the quicker you can list, the quicker you can sell and the quicker you can know how to list and know how to sell, the more likely you're going to get the sale that you want. So make it easier for yourself to sell. The more you know about this item and understand this item, the easier it is to list as you repeat that process 
you can also take that same knowledge for when you source as well. Because when you see what sells, why it's sold, and all the data and information behind it, what I'm talking about is different styles, different you know item specifics, and understanding why that item sold, you can now understand why that item should be sourced for as well. So my key areas across this have really been across four little areas. Simply understand the product, understand the price, understand the person you're selling to, and understand how you're going to promote it. When we know what we are selling and we know what price we want to sell it for, you gotta make sure you have profits covered, it makes it easy to sell. And then by also knowing who is buying and the type of customer that is buying, we can then start to leverage the promotion and the wiggle room of how we can make an offer to them. For instance, is your buyer another seller? Are they buying to resell? Or are they a collector? Will they pay top dollar, but looking for a deal or a very specific item? And then the third type is, are they an everyday consumer? Are they needing to meet their need? Are they wanting this because it meets their need? That need might not necessarily because they have to wear clothing on their back or because they really need that tool. It might be because they really want that tool that is really cool and, and has the right colors that suits their lifestyle, but also they have to fix something in their house. So there's a whole lot of different caveats and a whole lot of different understanding for that, but really it comes down into those categories. Maybe they're buying to sell, maybe they're buying to collect, or maybe they're buying as a consumer. Now let's not forget the basics of selling as well. We wanna have good photos in our listings. We wanna have clear descriptions. We wanna have very clear details and specifics, lots of specifics where we're relevant. We also wanna make sure we've got postage and that it's fair. And we wanna have a returns policy if relevant and is fair and necessary. We also, we also, and this is a must, and you can check out this really good video uh, from my good friend, Grogi Bear. Uh, go check it out about international shipping. If you're not using international shipping, you're missing out on a whole new world of opportunity and some really good ways to earn a few extra dollars. Now, my third point is focus on selling and make money. Now, this seems simple enough and it seems, oh yeah, of course, but the reality is sometimes we don't really understand how to make money. And this is what you need to know. When listing, you need to know what your lowest price is. You need to have an idea of how much are you selling this item for. You know, it's nice to have an idea like, oh yeah, this item's worth $70, but would you take $50? Like understand that when you're listing the item and it makes the process so much simple. Set your auto accepts up. So if you know that you've paid $5 for an item and it's worth $70, but you're happy to take $40 for it, or your lowest might even be $25, plus postage or whatever it may be, put that into play. The reason why is because, yes, we're here to make money. We're not here to be greedy. Greed will come if we're trying to get the toppest dollar and the highest amount of money. Put it this way, if you're not making sales, you'll start to realize that, hey, I'm not making any money and you won't enjoy this process. The sooner you start making money, volume is where the king is. Volume is the key because that's where you'll start to make more money on a regular basis and it starts to compound because you can put that money back to work. So I, I digress. So the second point is price to sell, but price it with a strategy. Understand your selling power. Who else is selling it? What price are they selling it at? What advantage do you have to be able to sell this item? Have you been able to get it cheaper? Maybe your item is more rare. Maybe it's a different size. Maybe it's a different color. What is it that makes your item more unique? Or what gives you the power to be able to ask for the price that you want? but also to be able to get a price that's going to enable a sale quicker. Also need to consider returns. You need to consider postage and the costs of doing business. That comes with any sale on eBay. So make sure you understand that and take that into account when trying to give the best experience and trying to get the sale for your type of customer. The big question is if you can sell an item within five days of listing it and still take a profit, what is your lowest profit point? Are you happy to take 5%, 10%, 20% profit? Is it higher, is it lower? What is it? Because at the end of the day, that is what's going to set you apart from other people having items sitting around. Now, the final point for this area was make sure you're sending offers and don't just be giving those 5%, oh, yeah, I'll just take 5% off. Be competitive, make an offer that they cannot say no to. Of course, you still gotta make a profit. The next area that I've been learning over the last 100 days is leveraging systems that make work easier. Now, I understand that this can come across as like, oh yeah, this is what everyone says. But the reality is there is some meat to this because it is so important because as you scale, as you grow, as you do more volume, the systems are the things that enable you to do that more effectively and more efficiently. So the first area is listing. When you're listing, have templates, have shortcuts, 
build a process that works for you and works for the different items that you're selling and understand how you can leverage this. For instance, there is options to be able to find someone else's item that sold and sell similar to their item, or you can find items that has sold in your shop and sell similar to that, or you can find items that you've got listed in your shop and use that as a template too, or you can create templates in the listing areas. There's so many different ways that we can do this. Find one that works for you and one that is more efficient and that is more reliable. I would like to think if you know what you're doing, follow your own templates. Don't go follow other people's because it might not be what you think it is. Make sure you have a process for how you're doing your photos. How many photos do you want for certain items? Make this process as easy as possible. Don't just be thinking, oh yeah, that looks good enough, but understand what are the areas that you want to cover for the photos. If you're selling books, if you're selling DVDs, if you're selling clothes, if you're selling electronics, whatever it may be. And also have a process of how you're going to store these items, not just from a SKU system perspective. Yes, you need a SKU system because that's going to help you when you're picking your items to post. But how are you going to store these items and what is the most effective way? Now, I store a whole bunch of different items in my storage unit. I'm storing clothing. I'm storing books. I'm storing media. I'm storing toys. I'm storing so many different things. I have to have a process that works. Have a process for when you're picking and packing. How are you going to do this? What, what order of events are you going to do? How are you going to be then putting your labels on? Think about this because if it works for five items, you want it to work for 50 items. And when you start, you know, picking and packing 10 items that might take you, let's say it takes you 20 minutes, you start having 20, 30, 40, 50 items, things start to get very, very time sensitive. Now, the final area is networking. And this has been really key over the last 100 days for me because building connections inbound and outbound is going to change the way you do business, how you will source, find ways that you can have other people bring items to you. I'm not necessarily saying rock up to your door. I mean, that could be an option, doing wholesale options, but think about how can you have other people being eyeballs for you, sending you offers, sending you details, reaching out, giving you opportunity, build that network, because if they can work for you, it's time saved for you. And I'm not saying like, find someone that will just do this full time for you. I'm just saying, build those relationships, tell people what you do, tell people what you're looking for and tell them that you're willing to pay for it. The other thing is how will you sell? Find what will sell constantly and find ways to increase your cash flow and manage that sell through rate. So if you have people that you know will buy items off you and you don't have to do any work, but you're still making a profit, why would you sell it somewhere where you have to wait 90 days to get a sale when you could sell it so much cheaper, move it in volume and everyone's happy. If you can make a profit, your person you're selling to can make a profit and they're all moving it in the ways that make sense for them. Think about that because there's so many more ways we can make money. It doesn't have to be just reselling online. You could do wholesale opportunities. You can do repair gigs. You can do refurbished gigs. There's so many ways that we can think about this, right? For instance, maybe you know how to repair laptops. Find ways you can get laptops for five, 10, 15, $20, fix them up and then sell them for 80, 60, 100, $150. Find ways that you can get creative. At the same time, if you know someone that will repair laptops or electronics, find a way to pick these up for five, 10, $15 and then sell them to them for 20, 30 or $40. And then they can go on and make some more money from them too. The key thing here is to connect, is to learn and is to understand other people and what motivates them, what they're trying to achieve and how you can do the same. At the end of the day, we're here to have a purpose of making a business because it's our livelihoods, but also we're here to make money. And that is the five areas that I've been learning over the last 100 days that has enabled my business to grow. And as I showed before, the progress and the uptick of seeing the results on eBay have been really, really rewarding. And this is just on eBay. I've been selling in a few different areas as well, offline of eBay, just to help keep that cash flow happening. And this has been a very scary process because I've had to take bigger risks. And that's probably a bonus tip that I would encourage you is be willing to take some risks and to try some new things, but do it at a smaller level. And what I mean by if you want to try a new area, don't go just go crazy and, you know, with no, not doing any research, do some research, do some research. All the information there is on eBay. All the information there is out there. Do some research, understand what category or what area you want to look into a bit more. Then you have to start to think, well, how can I do this on a consistent basis? How much is it going to cost me on a regular basis? And see if you can do that at a, you know, at a scale of 10 less. Meaning, how can I, if you wanted to do 100 items of these a month or 100 items of these a week, how can you do it 
at you know a lower scale of maybe 10 a month or 10 a week and just see if you can get that process right that would be my bonus tip all right if you're stuck around this long let's dive into the progress update for my best week yet to date so this week has been very very interesting um it started off really really well i was able to move some items to someone else and then also i've had some roller coaster moments of some ups and downs but all in all we've had a very progressive week as you can see here I've been selling clothes books electronics dvds media jeans video games toys and lego and clothes being the big win for the week of around 1400 dollars worth in revenue so we've done a total of over three thousand six hundred dollars which is just just incredible really really rewarding week now in terms of the items that have actually been selling i've got four top items these aren't the toppest items these are just four items i've selected that i think are pretty cool and i want to take you through those so the first item is this forgotten realms double diamond triangle saga this is a four book set and i picked this up from savers probably last year actually i paid twelve dollars and 44 cents for these and i've been able to sell them for 129 dollars and 38 cents and i believe they went to denmark and after fees and postage i walked away with $83.60. That international postage really helped here because I had these listed for 60, I was sending offers at 40, at 30 even, no one was accepting. Someone came through and paid full price. <laughs> just crazy. This next item was this um, Microsoft Xbox console. Just, just cool to see that these things still do sell guys. So if you can pick them up for a nice price, I got this out of a big bulk lot and was able to pay about $11.43. That's the average cost of good. And I sold it for $120 that's posted and worked out to be about $76 back into my pocket after fees and postage. And then top item number three for this week, pretty cool, was this Bill Series 1 new and sealed, region zero, meaning I was able to send this anywhere in the world and they could play it. This one cost me $4.69 from a recent bulk lot that I got, a media lot, uh, was able to sell it for $82.20, that's international, going to UK, and I've walked away with $52.10 after fees and postage international postage for the win and then another cool item for this week was this top robot um just vintage toy really i picked this up from vinnie's i sold a few of these the other week as well uh this one cost me about three dollars and 89 cents sold it for 62 dollars that's posted as well and walked away with 35 dollars and 69 cents after fees and postage as you can see here these top items are not clothes even though i had been selling a lot of clothes this week um they were really just bread and butter of consistency i did do a big bulk lot move of clothing as well um, to someone else which yeah really kept those dollars moving in, in terms of cash flow but this week really it's actually been pretty good I've seen a lot of collectibles start to jump back up again outside of the clothing area so very interesting to see how the market's moving now how do we actually progress for week 118 well we've done 97 sales which has been really really rewarding that's a really big tick we've also done a margin of around 41 percent our cost of goods was 942 dollars so I have really paid up to be able to get this kind of uh dollary dues back into my pocket of three thousand six hundred and fifty four dollars and profit came out to be about fifteen hundred and two dollars average sale price for this week was thirty seven dollars and sixty seven cents and average cycle time was 94 days it's been a very lucrative and rewarding week cash flow is up and that's really what's enabling the business to grow as well to be able to take that money get it back out there and putting it to good work so there you go, that has been this week. If you have stuck around this long, let's dive into some show and tell. Howdy folks, Monday morning and it's a public holiday. It's already 11 o'clock and we've got a lot going out. I'm just starting to prep orders because I can't obviously send this till Tuesday, but I want to get ahead of about 53 items here. We've got, we have got stacks, absolutely chocolate. And I've got a nice little cheeky uh, four bundle here of clothing. But the other cool bundle was this guy, a whole bunch of, m m figurines that's gone for a hundred dollars um but then we've got all the usual bread and butter stuff guys we've just got little clothing we've got jeans we've got shirts we've got actually i think that's all of these jeans and shirts maybe some pants um some north face fleece i've got a few books going out here um do have a couple of vhs going out too pingu um uh, inglorious bastards that's gone for like 45 bible story books um some toys some more books there we've got some jd ward um no sorry jr ward uh some star wars stuff we've got some these aren't pops but like pops some more books some video games that's a big bundle of psp P games going out there we've got this lego technic going out um that's all the media going out there guys right there there's a whole bunch um <coughs> as you can see a couple of there are a few bundles too got a camera lens going out and i think 
that's everything. So we're gonna get cracking and packing on this. <sighs> we do what we do, right? This is great. It's good, good week. It worked out pretty good. Yesterday was about a $500, $600 day. Um, and I've had a few sales come through this morning. Quite a lot of people that haven't paid actually. Still got about six people pending, probably about $600 worth to be honest, maybe 500, uh, which is very frustrating. Anyway, um, oh, it's cold. <sighs> Let's get packing. All right, team, all done. 53 packages, um, all prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna be back here in the morning and I'll actually print all these out and send them out. I could do it now, but um, I've got to come back here in the morning to do some other stuff anyway. So I'll trigger that off in the morning and then, yeah, all done and dusted. Love it, absolutely love it. It's just nice big pile, <laughs> it's insanity. Oh, crazy stuff. All right, appreciate you and let's jump over to the next day. So we're gonna be Tuesday. Wednesday or Thursday. All right, team is back here. It is Tuesday morning and had a few more sales come through overnight. And we've got this one here. I just sold another one of those just the other week. Um, some Star Wars stuff going out with the Star Wars celebration um, convention currently on. Star Wars stuff is going well. William Blake, National Geographic, book I think it was. National, Ge not National Geographic, National Gallery book. A um, couple of more movies and some Bible stuff, which goes really well around Easter. Um, got to get all this out. I've also got a couple of pairs of jeans and shirts going out as well. Um, I've got a quick little cheeky salvos run at 9 a.m. and then I've got to go pick up a, a big deal and then I'm meeting someone else to do another deal um, and then I'm gonna finish up all this. So it's all happening this morning, guys. Keep you updated. All right, team, we're back and it's uh, Thursday. So I didn't really come here Wednesday. Actually, I didn't come here Wednesday at all. And last time, on Tuesday, I said that I was going to do a deal and all this stuff in. This is how I kind of left everything when I left because it arrived and I had to do some other things. So I just got it all out flat laid and um, I've got stuff everywhere at the moment. And I've just got a whole bunch more that's just rocked up. Some from new stock, some from that's been processed at home and things like that. So, and also from my worker as well. So lots of things happening at the same time. So here we've got lots of um, just winter clothes really. Um, jackets and fleece and things like that. We've got a few more things here that I picked up the other day, which I forgot to take home. Um, so I'm going to shuffle all this and then uh, we're here to pack, pick, I think 27 items I think it is. Might be a little less than that. <sighs> Never a dull day guys. This is what it looks like when you're growing. Uh, there's about 90 items here I think there is. So it, it looks like a lot, but 90, I mean if I'm doing 20 a day, that moves pretty quick in terms of getting up listed, so it is what it is. All right, I'm gonna pack all this, put them into bags, I gotta take them home. Um, I'll process all these at home, uh, just because of the space. And uh, then once they've all gone through my worker as well, they come into these bags, so not too bad. I'm gonna move all this, and then I'll take you through all the goodies that have been selling. All right, team, all packed up, and now we're gonna go through all the orders. We've got 26 orders. Um, interesting bunch of stuff, actually. Let's. let's take so we've got, these are probably the best hitters. I mean, these were $60, but they've actually gone international to, I think it's to Denmark. So that's pretty cool. And they've paid like $36 postage. Some David Eddings, some uh, good old Ken Duncan. We've got a Chewy, he went out this morning. A couple of um, PSP games. We've got an IP phone going out. That's the last one of the three I had. A couple of, um, yeah, just movies, media, Blu-ray, bloody da da some more video games, some little Pokemon characters. Got Pokemon cards going out from last night's stream. A big shout out to John Francis, man. We've got another Crown Zenith ETB. We've got an Xbox going out with a couple of games and then all the clothing here, guys. Lots of uh, North Face and uh, some long sleeves. And I think there's a pair of jeans in there too and an AFL jacket. So easy amount, but still very comfortable. I've just hit 35,000 total as well for 90 days so very happy with that and that's not including the stuff that i'm selling um off ebay such as wholesale stuff and things like that so pretty good pretty good um let's pack it up let me know if you do have any questions comments thoughts um again i say all these things of what's been working for me because they've been working for me if you too have some ways of that you've been able to scale your business grow your business do let me know in the comments below the other thing that i want to call out is of course I have to keep showing up. I have to keep doing the work. I have to keep taking action and I have to keep learning ways to pivot and adjust and find better ways of doing business. 
Because at the end of the day, if we get complacent, that's all we will get. We will get the same comfort that we're sitting at. So if I want to continue to grow over the next 100 days, am I going to have to keep doing exactly the same that I'm doing? Or do I need to, again, continue to change, pivot and adjust and make sure that I'm refining these processes and ways of working to do a better outcome? Appreciate you being here. You have a wonderful day. Cheers.